All right, we're going to talk about the second part. We're going to talk about the light reaction. And with the light reaction, <clears throat> there's two parts. You know, we had multiple parts with cellular respiration, but in photosynthesis, we basically only have two parts. So we're going to talk about the light dependent reaction in this part. And so we know we have this electromagnetic radiation that comes from the sun and we can measure the wavelengths of there's there's tons of different wavelengths that come from the the sun anywhere from a picometer which is 10 to the negative 12 that's really really small and then up to 100,000 kilometers which um, when we talk about the wave we're talking about a wavelength is from the crest to the crest or the trough to the trough <clears throat> so that's the distance that we are looking at the shorter the wavelength the more energy that um that um that photon or you could say that that solar power has and so um, we know like like for instance uv light is very small it, it can damage dna x-rays can also they're very small they can also uh, x-rays gamma rays they're all very very tiny when we look at the light spectrum here <clears throat> there's only a small region in which our eyes can the photoreceptors in our eyes can pick up and that is called the visible light spectrum and we can see that we can break that up into our colors of our rainbow. When we put it all together, we get white light. <clears throat> we can see the smaller wavelengths out here, the X-rays, the UV, X-rays, gamma, the longer wavelengths out here, the radio, microwaves, and so on. And so again, these have more energy than the bigger wavelengths out here. Pigments are molecules that can absorb certain wavelengths of light. They can reflect or transmit, meaning that they can either, it can bounce off them or pass all the way through them. Um, and so again, different wavelengths are going to um, be absorbed by different types of pigments. And so chlorophyll A is found in all photoautotrophs. It absorbs uh, wavelengths of light on either end of the visible spectrum, mostly like the reds and the blues and it reflects the middle, the greens and the yellows. We also see that um, chlorophyll B is another pigment that is common in photo, um, photosynthetic organisms. <clears throat> it also absorbs the reds and the blues. It has a little bit of, um, absorb a little bit of the oranges. And we can see those spectrums here with our chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. And then we also have some accessory pigments called our xanthophils, um, beta carotens. They absorb the blues and some of the violet lights. Um, and we also have, there's some rhodopsins, which um, the xanthophils reflect yellow, the beta carotenoids um, reflect, tend to reflect the orange, the rhodopsins reflect the red. We see a lot of these accessory pigments in the fall when the leaves change colors. So photosystems, we have two photosystems in plants. This is called the light dependent reaction because it does re require light. We have a photon of light that hits that photosystem. And when we get that photosystem, the pigment particles are gonna capture that energy. And as they capture that energy, they're going to, their electrons are going to get excited. And as they get excited, they're gonna pass and kind of funnel that energy through that, that photosystem until we finally get to what's called the reaction center. And in that reaction center, we're gonna have our redox reaction here. We're gonna lose that excited <clears throat> electron to our primary electron acceptor. Once that primary electron acceptor receives that electron, it will pass that electron into the electron transport chain. And so here we can see um, that photon of light as it funnels that energy and that electron gets so excited, it gets past that primary electron acceptor. We're gonna continue to lose electrons. And so we can't keep this reaction going because we wouldn't have any more electrons to pass once we have utilized the, the, you know, the, the most that we can get rid of we would max, you know, we would, we would be empty. And so we need a source of electrons and that's where water comes in. And so the water is going to be split by photosystem. This is the, this is photosystem two, 
Or system two will split water. This is a hydrolysis reaction. And with that, we are going to release, there's our oxygen that we breathe. We're going to release oxygen. We're also going to make two protons because we're going to take off two electrons by getting rid of the, we're splitting up that hydrogen. So that's the source of electrons plant use. This is why you water your plants. The light dependent reactions start with photosystem two. It captures energy from light, passes the energized electron to the electron transport chain. So here's our electron transport chain, pass the electron, pass the electron, pass the electron. <clears throat> and just like the ETC did in cell respiration, what is it gonna do? It's gonna drive a proton pump. And that proton pump is going to pump protons into the interior of the grana. So we are in the thylakoid membrane. So we're gonna have a high concentration of protons inside. We call this the lumen. So that's the inside. So let's see if I can draw here. So if we had our grana, those stacks, and then the inside, so that would be a, a double membrane, right? Here's our double, our lipid bilayer, our thylakoid membrane. The ins, oh, I was afraid it would do that. The inside is called the lumen. So the inside of our circle, I gotta not touch the link. So the inside is the lumen. And that's what we're doing. We're pumping protons into the lumen. <clears throat> And then our, um, and then like I said, we're going to replace our electrons with water. As the energize, like I said, as they as they pass that electron, we can see step three here. We have that pump. That pump is going to use that energy from that excited electron, basically that solar power that we energize that our electron, and that electron will then return to its ground state where it's gonna then be received by the PS1. The photosystem one will then get another power boost by another photon of light. <clears throat> so here we can see that electron is accepted. Step four, um, we have captured some more light. When we do that, we're gonna have enough energy to put that electron back into the second. This is another little tiny electron transfer chain. And then the enzyme NADP plus reductase, that protein there, will take that electron and it's going to reduce NADP plus to NADPH. So we get that out of there. <clears throat> That's one of the things we want right there is that electron carrier is now full. We have the, um, the high, right proton concentration in that lumen and next we're going to use that diffusion there okay to drive atp synthase and we're going to phosphorylate using atp synthase so we get two things two things out of the light reaction we're getting nadp plot in nadph our electron carrier is full in the second we're getting energy the energy in the form of chemical energy so we're taking solar energy, then kinetic energy, and ending up with chemical energy in that chemical bond between the phosphates. And so you can kind of see here, <clears throat> here's that grana. Here's our thylakoid membrane. We can see we can split water to replace the electrons that we're using from that sunlight energizing our electron it goes into the etc it pumps the protons notice we have our high proton concentration in here we then pass the electron it gets re-energized again and then reduces nadp plus to nadph which is then going to go to the calvin cycle over here we're going to use that concentration gradient right right here and we're going to drive ATP synthase to make ATP, which is also going to go to the Calvin cycle. And that is the whole point of the light dependent uh, reaction. And that is to harvest electrons and to make chemical energy, to convert our solar energy to chemical energy in the form of ATP. <clears throat> so our inputs are NADP plus. What do we get out? NADPH. 
We put in our ADP and our phosphate, we end up with our ATP. We use our water to split that, right? And that goes onto our electron carriers. We get our, thankfully we get our oxygen, which we all use for cellular respiration. So here's just a little summary of this. So you can see this again, we have our water coming in and oxygen going out. We have our ADP going in, our ATP coming out, our empty electron taxi cab going in and our full one coming out. So that is the summary of the light reaction. I also have, I also have a video of me doing the light reaction in Canvas. I draw that up on the board for you. So if you find that helpful. Um, so again, I told you this chapter should be a little bit easier than the last. And so that is um, the light reaction. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.